Oh, another pool update with uh, all sorts of other trouble. Came home from work today, I was out in the backyard and I heard this sound. And you can see it's barely moving. I'm gonna shut it so it works its way back. Oh, great. So now this thing's pooched and I gotta try to find a replacement for it. But I just discovered a trick that will uh, probably extend the life of yours for probably a good few years. So what we need to do is take it apart here. I've already undone the four screws. There's one, two, three, four. This is uh, supposed to be finger tight and only finger tight. So you take that out. Handle just picks up. And the whole assembly cover just comes off like that. So in here basically what you have is a synchronous motor that will run in uh, one direction or the other. And two micro switches which are your limit switches. This is a cam right here that hits the switch and tells it when uh, it's hit the end of its travel and stops the motor. And uh, the control box here tells it uh, to heat or cool or open or close the valve or what have you. Anyway, let me show you what the problem is. You gotta undo these two screws, take the motor out, and I'll show you what the problem I'm having is. Okay, so now I have the two screws for the motor out, and you just pick it up. Now if you look carefully at it, it's worn. Now I don't know what a replacement looks like, but I would expect that the shaft on it would be all the same size. Uh, what I did before is I took out the six little screws, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I looked at the gear train and everything in there looked fine. That looks all right, although it may be worn, I cannot tell. But something dawned on me. When this is installed, what I did is I took the screws out and you can see how it has a little bit of play. So what I did is I just moved it slightly over like that and just held it in place uh, while I actuated the electronics and it seemed to ride a lot more smoothly. So basically what I want to do is get that end part of the gear which looks to be in good shape to mesh with that. How do we do that? We raise the motor up and to do that we're just going to use some washers. So let me go and get those in and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, so here's a couple of washers, and if you notice, that's just about exactly the size of that worn area. So if I shim this by putting these two washers here and here, that's effectively going to lift the motor up and engage the end part of the gear with the gear train inside. So in order to do that, it basically is uh, just a little bit of positioning which uh, is going to be very hard to do with the camera here. So I'll see if I can do it like this. You just want to kind of line up with the hole. Okay, now let me get my other ones. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to place the motor squarely on top of that, trying not to disturb the washers. That I need two hands for. Okay, I've gone ahead and placed the motor on top. You can see the washers that I have installed there and over here. I've just started the screws. Now all we need to do is just tighten them down. Just till they're snug. Just about there. And then this one. Okay, the motor is rigidly mounted. Doesn't want to go anywhere. And now when we actuate it, yeah, it makes noise certainly, but it runs. It always made this kind of sound. But anyway, that's how you do it. Just shim it up with some washers and you can extend the life of your Goldline GVA24, uh, which I believe now is owned by Hayward. 
Okay, she's all back together. The uh, uh, lifting of the motor does not cause any issues with the case going back. So everything's all back together. And you can see it operates a lot nicer than before with that ratcheting sound. So there it goes to uh, just about full open. Hits the limit switch. And when I shut it off manually, it goes all the way back. And that's it. Just shim the motor up with some washers and should be good for another 10 years.